You're listening to Guts and Grind with Siju and Sajin, making the real estate journey accessible to anyone. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Guts and Grind. My name is Siju Koshi. I am joined here with Sajin Abraham. My co-host. Hello, everybody. We are starting our fourth segment of our season two, which is all about getting a tenant. The last few segments were all about how to the process to build to get your property, what you do once you first get that house to prep it. And now we are in our last phase of it, which means getting the actual tenant and getting it fruitful and working for you. And so this specific episode, episode 43, is all about screening your applicants, right? So how do you find that ideal tenant? But before we get started, Saj, how are you doing, brother? Doing well, man. Doing well, surviving, you know what I mean? Like just kind of working and looking for deals. And, you know, like I guess speaking of real estate, like the the market seems a little bit, it's like cooling off, right? Like it's not as hot as it was before. It's still hot, like don't get me wrong. But um, it's, it seems like there's deals out there that, you know, to be had. I'm on some like wholesale lists and I'm seeing a lot more wholesale deals coming in, which is kind of cool. I think it's the interest rates going up is kind of making people scared to buy. So, which I guess that's, that was the whole purpose of it, right? So, yep. um, yeah, I, I mean, things are leveling off, but I'm still, I'm still, you know, waiting for deals and stuff. So just kind of keep my eyes out. But yeah, so far so good. Just, de- you know, dealing with tenants too. You know, there's a turnarounds that we have to do. We're working on one house where we're trying to get things fixed up to get it rented again and just trying to figure out what's the best game plan, whether sell it, do a 1031 exchange and buy another property or just keep it and like, let that thing run. But, you know, just trying to map that out. How about you, man? How's everything going for you? Same, bro. Same, you know, just, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of thinking our, our, our way through the market. I'm always looking for stuff. I know, like you mentioned, the market has slowed down, which again, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people that are potentially, you know, interested in, in investing and they're like, well, should I buy or should I save? You know, this is all the reason why we say structure your finances properly, right? So have enough savings and have excess so you can actually pull the trigger on if there is a sweet deal that comes through, which I think now you'll probably see a lot more really good deals because houses are sitting on the market longer, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm hearing people saying they, they have a little bit more leverage to negotiate now, right? So before it was Hey, house is hundred thousand dollars. People are bidding and paying one hundred fifty thousand, right? Like now, yeah. those same houses that are listed for one hundred thousand, let's just say hypothetically, may go for ninety or eighty thousand, right? Right. Just so that they right. can sell it. And so, even though the interest rates are going up, I still believe that you know there's a place for it, especially if you have extra money. You would also think, even though the interest rate goes up, you still have you know a cheaper house that you potentially buy, and you can always refinance the house later if the rates exactly. go down. So there's always options. And uh, I just say, you know, to our people and our viewers, stay motivated and and stay on the hunt because I I still believe that, you know, real estate is a great way to invest in in your future. So, but other than that, we're just grinding along. I, I, you know, I think we talked a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm just kind of in the, in the maintenance mode. I got a bunch of homes that I need to take care of major appliances and things like that. So it's just like, ah, (laughs) It's never fun, but that's a part of the business, right? Like we have to do it, right? So it's, it's just a part of the game. Yep. Um, I, I wanted to piggyback on what you said earlier. Like it's better to be ready than get ready, right? Oh, yeah. And so like keeping all your finances in order. So when the deal comes, because like opportunities are like lurking, they're just like floating around and it's up to you to be prepared, always be prepared to take advantage of those opportunities once they come into your face, right? Oh, and yeah. so that's kind of why like we've built this podcast to, and, and actually season two of this podcast is really like in order of like what you should be doing. Like we talked about getting your finances in order, working with the lender, working with the realtor, like finding the right people, the right players in your team to make it happen. Right. And so it's really all in an effort to, to line things up, to be ready when the opportunity comes. So that that was a really good point. I just wanted to highlight that since you, since you mentioned it. Yeah. And these, and these are the times where a true wealth is built, right? Like, I mean, people that are scared are going to be sitting on the sidelines or running away, but, but, you know, people that have the means, meaning you have everything saved for a rainy day and you have a little bit of extra to invest. This is where people are going to jump in and say, Hey, I'm going to get it for a cheap discounted price. And I'm then, you know, once the economy comes back up, you're on the plus now, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah. and even more. So um, and just- I think that's what it is. Like you, you have to be in a position where you're just ready. Yeah. And when people are scared, you should take that as a cue to be brave. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when the whole world is brave, maybe you should be scared. You know, like yeah. when everyone's going full in on something, maybe you should think twice about it. Right. Mm-hmm. But when people are scared, like, you know, it's like a flock of birds. 
people just kind of go with the flow like oh everyone's going this way then i'm gonna go this way yeah. so you have to be mindful of that when you're when you're doing this game but, but yeah like you were talking about earlier like you could probably get discounted rates although re interest rates are high that's the thing right people are scared because interest rates are high so maybe you should view that as an opportunity to say all right let me not worry about the interest rates right now and focus on the fact that i could get a discounted price on a property and then you deal with the interest rate later. Just make sure the numbers work out and then you can make it happen, right? So I, I think that's a great way to approach this to continue to grow your, your portfolio and really go, grow your wealth. I, I really believe that millionaires are made when when things like this happen in the world. So um, 100%, I, 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 I can't you know disagree with you on that. But yeah, I mean, sorry to go on a little tangent, but I, I know that uh, people are, are, are afraid and, and I wanna keep people motivated and I hope you know people are are looking at it from all lenses. Make sure it's comfortable for you and don't right. jump into something that you don't feel comfortable with. But uh, with that said, this week's or episode is all about, you know, once you've gotten that house, we're in that last phase and how do you put in the right tenant in place? So Saj, right. what are some things that you factor whenever considering a tenant to put in your in your property? Right. Okay. So I, I do want to like build it up a little bit. So I, I think every episode we kind of say, oh, this is so important. And every, every element is so important, like finding the right lender or getting your money straight, finding the right lender, finding the right realtor, all that stuff. You know, what, what property am I buying? Where am I going to buy? All that stuff is super important. Right. But just to use an analogy, it's like, if you're a basketball player and you go to the gym, you put in the work in the gym and you practice every day and you're dribbling and you do all this stuff, making your shots and doing all that stuff. This is like when you, if you don't show up for the game, all that stuff didn't matter. All that other stuff was just a waste. Like, why did you work out if you didn't even show up for the game? Right. And so for me, finding the right tenant is like the game. That's the game. Like that, that's the big game where you need to play and do everything that you've learned, everything you've accumulated. That's for this point, because finding the right tenant, it's a make or break thing for you, like mentally. Right. If you have the, a good tenant, it makes the process like amazing where the rent's paid on time, they take care of the property, they call you whenever there's issues, you know, all those type of things, right? They, they're good communicators. All it, it makes it so pleasant. But when you have a bad tenant, it's the worst. And Sid and I have had both. We've had both. We've had good tenants. We have had bad tenants. And bad tenants are the ones that are make you like, should I still be in this game? Like, should I still be a, a landlord? This is horrible. But you know, you just get motivated and you get back on the bike, right? I just want to say all that because screening is super important. And personally, I use a realtor to do the whole screening process because I believe I'm a huge advocate of like giving the work to the pros. So that way I'm not messing things up. Like I don't want to DIY something uh, as important as this. Right. But I know a lot of people that DIY it and they do really well. So if you do plan on DIYing it, I would like, you want to look at the criminal background. You want to look at their employment. You want to look at like their, their personal income. Like what are they really doing? Right. And I guess we could go a little bit further on that. Like, so for criminal background, I mean, if it's a small misdemeanor type of thing, like things that you could just say, I, I could understand why they went through this or whatever, maybe that's something to look over. But if there's like violence or, you know, like major criminal things that are going on, I would try to avoid that, right? Because you don't want to invite a problem into your home, right? And so that's why it's important to check criminal background, just to have a gauge of who this person is, what they're about and things like that, right? One thing to add on to that, with the criminal side of things, you also got to be mindful of where your property is too. So we kind of talked touched on this on our last episode about the different classes of, of property, right? So if you're in a, in a D class neighborhood, which is the worst of the worst, that's the clientele that you're probably going to invite as potential applicants for your, that property versus if you're in a nice area, you know, you're going to get the better clientele because, you know, the, the rents are going to be higher. It's going to be an apples to apples comparison when you're talking about the clientele versus the type of properties that you're going to get. Right. So keep that in mind. So if you're in a, like a BC class area, you may get a few people with, like, like Saad said, a few dings on their record. Right. So, you know, it depends on what it is, right. If it's a small little misdemeanor for something that happened 10 years ago, are you going to, you know, cut their head off for it? No, we're not going to, you know, it's, it's, it, you may see a lot of the applicants have something similar to that, right? So it's, and then from there, you just kind of vet out, you know, the cream of the crop out of that, right? So, right. so kind of keep in mind where it depends, that, that's why area also matters uh, on the property type that you buy. So that, that kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's equally associated when you talk about criminal records and all that. For sure. Yeah. And, and this is not to be discriminatory, you know, like it's really more about a protection thing, right? Like you want to protect yourself, you want to protect your property. You want to protect the neighbors of that property too, right? Like you don't want to have a bad reputation. And I, I think it's important to be able to be mindful of that and make sure you're taking care of everybody, right? And so that's why 
the first item was criminal background, right? But moving next on to the employment, I mean, I think this is pretty obvious. You want to know that these people could <laughs> pay rent, you know, like you want to make sure that they're gainfully employed. I'm not too particular about if if they were to hop around, right? Like, like if they went from one job to another, as long as it's a, you know, if it's like month to month and they're doing different jobs, then maybe that's a, a red flag, right? But if it's like they were at a place for one and a half to two years and they moved on to the next and you could tell that, oh, it was, it was an increase in pay, you know, like that's good, like good for you. Like you're, you're trying to advance yourself and make more money. Like that's awesome, right? But if they're hopping around a lot and maybe you might want to question like, why are you hopping around a lot? Like what, why, why aren't you employed in one place for a long period of time? So employment is, is important. I mean, of course, right? Sid, you any thoughts on that? Yeah. Employment wise, I agree. Obviously they're going to have to bring in, you know, we generally, the general rule is at least two or three times the rent to at least kind of help, you know, know that they can at least pay for their rent. Right. So you can't just have just enough money to pay for the rent and have yeah. nothing else. Obviously, that's not gonna that's not gonna be good for you or for them. The other thing with employment also is now in this post COVID world, you know, it's kind of hard because a lot of people have jumped jobs. So that may or may not, like Saad said, uh, be a factor totally up to you guys. I mean, but just got to kind of kind of gauge the person, right? So, you know, a lot of these things are like they they go hand in hand, Like right? If they have a criminal record and they're hopping jobs, I mean, you, you know, that there's there's just an association to it. And you just know, like as a, as a human to make the right, right decision from that perspective. But yeah, I mean, in a post COVID world, you know, a lot of people shifted jobs. A lot of people are showing employment, unemployment as uh, income too, which I'm not a big fan of because that usually will run out. So that's yeah. something to also be careful with, but um, I agree just, you know, have at least, you know, two to three times the rent coming in, which will at least help them, you know, manage their daily bills as well as what, what I kind of like to use as a gauge. Yeah. And to continue on with employment, I also like to see their bank statements for the past two months to kind of verify, like, where's your money going? Like, are you frivolous? Cause like what Sid was saying, like, you can't make enough money just to cover rent. Right. Cause you know, for sure there's other bills. Like how are you going to pay for electricity? How are you going to pay for water? How are you going to pay for like, you know, eating like groceries and things like that. Right. So you want to have a gauge of like, where is your money going? Like, do you have enough money? Do you have reserves? I always, I always get weary about if people are paycheck to paycheck because it's like one flat tire away from not being able to pay rent, right? Yeah. Oh, my tires blew out and that's like a thousand dollars or whatever the, whatever the number is, right? And that sets me back and I can't make rent and blah, blah, blah. I've noticed that rent is the last thing that's on people's mind. It, it feels like everything else is more important, right? And so that's why I want to see when we do these background checks that there's enough cushion to, to know that, hey, if a rainy day does happen, they have funds for a rainy day. That's not an end all be all. There's no like magic bullet to know like, hey, because of this, there's no formula, right? Oh, they have three times the income and blah, blah, blah. Or there's two people working in the household. And like, those are all good parameters, but anything could happen, right? Like we're, we're living in a world where, you know, just things happen, right? Life happens and you, you don't want to be a cruel person and kick someone out because, oh, something bad happened to them. You don't want to be that person, but you could also hedge your bets, right? Oh, yeah. You could also like kind of give yourself enough cushion to, to protect yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, this is a business and this business is generating money for yourself and your family. And so we have to keep that in mind as well, right? Like you have to protect your own when you're doing this stuff, right? So that's kind of another tag on for the, uh, the employment part of it. The next item would be personal references, right? Like just to know like what type of person are you and like to be able to do that background check as far as, you know, whether it's an employer or like a, someone at their church or, you know, wh whatever organizations they may be, may be a part of, it's kind of good to have like a general idea of like, what is this person about? I remember this is years ago, we, we had uh, two tenants that we were debating about for a property, right? And one was a single dad and um, which is fine, you know, like whatever. And like their, their daughters would come visit from time to time. And then one was like a family. It was like a, a couple with two grown-ish kids, right? The single dad made tons of money. Like it was like, I was like, why would he not buy? Like, why don't we just buy a house, right? But he just wanted to rent, whatever. And then my realtor was saying like, hey, you know, both options are great. He did, he did a little bit more digging and like he, 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 it was crazy. He said, he's got like three motorcycles and a, like a nice car or whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's fine, whatever. He's like, you know what, like there's potential that like he's going to be loud and he's going to uh, disrupt the neighbors and he's going to do all these type of things. Like maybe you should just go with the, the family of four because they're just more like standard for the neighborhood, right? <laughs> 
I was like, oh, oh, I never, I never thought of that. You know, like that's, that's, that's interesting. But he did, he took that extra step. He dug a little bit deeper and he didn't just look at the money. It wasn't just like, Hey, he's making X amount of dollars per month. He's guaranteed to make rent, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, no, if, if there's issues that, that money doesn't matter. Like you're going to have to deal with the headaches of the neighbors complaining and all that kind of stuff too. Right. So those are things to consider. That's why personal references or even more, more than just personal references, but just digging a little bit deeper. Uh, Sid, you any thoughts on that? Yeah, personal references. I, I I would also include even prior, you know, where they stayed at before, whether oh, it's an yeah. older landlord or a old apartment complex, calling them saying, hey, if, if it's getting in touch with their home management system and saying, hey, what, you know, what, what, what was your experience with this tenant, right? So were they paying on time? Were they always late? One of the things I want to add also just kind of stems from this also is part of the criminal background check that whenever you go to some of these systems to pull the, the criminal history, it also pulls eviction history too. Mm. So it actually shows if they've been had any prior evictions, is there any money pending, any liens put on them, things like that. So this is an overall check, right? This is, again, like Saad said, we're not trying to discriminate against anybody. It's all about finding the ideal and most uh, you know effective tenant that will be f- good for us as well as for them, right? Like you got to make sure yeah. they're not in over their head. So if you're, if you're asking for a certain amount in rent, some people may think that they can afford it. And really, if, if they're only pulling in what the rent money is for the month, they're not able to support themselves. It's just, right. it's just, it doesn't work, but not everybody's thinking in the same way. So that it's kind of why we go through these screening processes. So part of personal references, again, is not just, you know, personal people, but it's also people that, that you've been associated with on the application itself. It actually asks for, you know, who your last landlord was or who your last, um, you know, apartment complex was. So, so that we can contact them and figure out, you know, what the whole history and background is. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree. These three are kind of the core that we use to vet out our tenants. And again, like Saj kind of hinted, and he kind of mentions it through the, through the season is that, you know, we use a real estate agent as well. I mean, you can easily do it yourself. I mean, if you're willing to go to the, the lengths of, you know, making sure you do the vetting according to what you would uh, like, that's always good. But, you know, having the experience of a realtor who's been through a ton of experiences, who's placed a lot of tenants, that's those, that kind of invaluable, you know, I mean, it's crazy, but the experiences, like you said, like, I mean, you, you never know, you know, like a, a motorcycle enthusiast could be very loud for the neighbor. You know, you can right. begin a lot of co- complaints from your neighbors, things like that. You know, I, that's just one example, right? There's, there's many that you can kind of go down, but I, I got, I got another quick story. So, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Story okay, time. So, uh, so I always use a realtor, right? I like every time it's always been a realtor and like my, my realtor's great. Like he's excellent at finding really good tenants. One time a tenant just had a life thing happen and they were like, Hey, I have to move in with so-and-so. So I have to break my lease. And they were very respectable. And like, I'm like, okay, you know, it's fine. I get it. And so we, I let it happen. They, they paid, you know, like an extra month to, to, to make it easier for me. And then I was like, man, I just paid my realtor. Let me try to do it myself. So I went and got the for lease sign. I put it up. I put my number everywhere. And I mean, the amount of calls, the amount of calls you get is unbelievable. Like, I mean, cause people just call just to call. Like, hey, is this house for rent? I'm like, yeah, it's house for rent. Here's the details. Here's some information, blah, 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 whatever. And like, so you have to field the calls. That's one thing, right? You have to weed out all the people that are just wanting to know information and get the people that really want to move in, right? And so there's that that process of doing the whole vetting, like everything we're talking about for each individual that you want to potentially have move in, right? And then, you know, you have to dig deeper, like we talked about the criminal history, the employment, the personal references, all those types of things. You have to do all that, right? And even then, like, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So I'm just trying to do the best I can. And then I finally found a tenant for this house on my own, like hands down the worst experience ever. Like that, that tenant was the worst. And to the point where it's like, she would lie to me about like the, when she was late for rent, I don't know how many times her dad died. Like, it's like, so like, how many dads do you have? Like every month your dad died and that's why you can't make rent. Come on, man. It was one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, what, what did I get myself into? And so because of that experience, I'm very much like, I, I no matter what, I'm always using a realtor. Like, just yeah. cause, cause I need that headache away from me. And also like, they just do a better job. They know what they're doing the same way. I wouldn't do electrical work. I, I wouldn't, you know, cause I'm, I, I just don't know. I might die doing it. Like I'd rather just have a realtor take care of the, the stuff that they need to take care of. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. I mean, you writing your, your phone number on and putting it in a board in the middle of a yard, that's like writing your number on the bathroom stall. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like random people just calling you just to talk yeah. to you. Hey, uh, you want to just chat? <laughs> like, no, I want to rent my house out. Like, no, don't call me for this. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's insane, but it, 
again, as long as you go through the processes, and this is not a perfect system also. that I also want to uh, conclude the episode. And I know we kind of ran a little long, but there's no perfect you know, way to vet out a person, right? Like people go through things too, right? So there's, you know, we've had, I've had people that have been placed uh, and we thought everything was great. They checked all the boxes well, but life happens, right? Things happen, yeah. right? And and you never know, right? The situations that you get put in and, and you may have to go through an eviction or you may have to go through, you know, a, a period where you have to kind of get, you know, people out and things like that. So there's no perfect solution. You can only just check your boxes as, as best as you can. And, and these are just some of the parameters that we use. So with that said, I mean, I'll, Saj, any of the final thoughts? If not, you know, I, I think I think we can kind of wrap wrap up this this week's episode. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think we covered it all. Like, um, don't be scared. I I think that's the biggest thing. I, I feel like we end every episode saying like, just be encouraged and like know that you could do it. You know, yeah. like, and if you if you physically can't do it, know that there's someone on your team that can do it, right? Yeah. So don't let any of this be a hurdle. Like we talk about how how hard it is to screen. Like there are professionals that could get it done, and so like always know that and always know that like don't let that be a stumbling block for you to not proceed with real estate because i don't know if i'm like being like you know like a, a horse where they, they only see the, the track blinders on like it's such a great avenue for like just anybody to build wealth i, I will so, say you know if, if it was easy everybody would do it right and i, I know i talked to a lot of people about this and, and and they're scarred by what their parents have experienced or what yeah. what they've went through growing up with tenants and things like that right and and they're like no nope, i never want to touch a real estate ever you know right. because of those reasons right because of bad tenants really a majority of it is bad tenants right it's just like oh my god i had a squatter in the house for a year <laughs> you know can't get them out things like that you know it's like it's like those things can be avoided actually you know a lot of that is also it's just you're not putting in the right restrictions in place, right? Nobody will be in your house for a year without it, without paying a, a dime. Trust me, uh, it may be a few months, but it shouldn't be a year. And so some of that can be weeded out. Uh, and those kind of experiences are kind of what have people looking away from real estate. But I think those can be avoided and you can have other people kind of handle these, these situations, right? So just keep your head up. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And that's why we uh, send this out to the, the minority out there. So... So yeah, keep your head up and hopefully you guys uh, found something out of this, uh, this week's episode. And then, you know, definitely like subscribe, you know, comment. If you had an experience, please do that. You know, uh, we're looking for feedback. So if anything, you um, want to share something, what should be some topics coming up, things like that. We're always open for it. So thank you again for joining. Thanks, Saj. And uh, until next time, take care. Bye. Thanks for listening to Guts and Grind with Siju and Sajin. Be sure to tune in next time.